Modern professional tennis is dominated by the ground strokes and in fact the ground strokes are so powerful that it makes it very difficult to win points at the net. However at the recreational level where ground strokes are not as powerful coming to the net is a really good strategy to apply. And one of the ways that you can come to the net is by chipping and charging your return. This is something that you rarely see at the professional level these days and I encourage you to employ this tactic. And here's how it's going to work. So when you decide to chip and charge on the return of serve you want to do this on a second serve and ideally you want to do this when the ball is a little bit higher at least above your waist and the decision to chip and charge must be made prior to your opponent's serve you can't spontaneously decide to chip and charge once the ball is already in play you're not going to be able to time it correctly it's very important that when you decide to chip and charge is not to play the chip and charge from behind the baseline because the distance to the net is going to be too big to cover and you're going to have a difficult time with the volley so you must do is sneak in a little bit and the best timing for the sneak in is when the opponent is about to strike the ball at that particular moment your opponent cannot change the serve anymore and this is when you start sneaking in and closing in so that you're closer to the service line and it gives you an easier time to strike the chip and charge and cover the net And it's important to understand that you don't want to chip and charge on a hard flat serve. You might be able to do a chip, but it's more of a defensive shot where you just get the ball back in play. It's very difficult to come to the net off that type of shot. So on a second serve, for example, you will be able to take a bigger swing and the chip is going to be more powerful. So what you want to do on a chip and charge is take a full backswing like you would on a slice and also set with a full shoulder turn that you can then hit all the way across the body and put some power on your return. So it's important to hit a quality return so that you can be in a favorable position at the net and hopefully put the volley away for a winner. As far as the technique, it's going to be exactly the same as the backhand slice approach shot. And if you're interested, you can check out my backhand slice approach shot video where I explain in detail how to strike this particular shot. Another way to come to the net off the return is the bunt and charge. And this is something that John McEnroe used to do a lot back in the day. The difference to a chip and charge is that you're going to be deflecting the ball back and the swing is going to be very short. So this is something that you can do even on a flat, hard first serve. Now because of the speed of the incoming ball, the timing is going to be very difficult and you need to make a very explosive quick move up to the ball so that you can take it early, bunt it and then continue your way onto the net. The fascinating thing about a bunt return, whether you're coming to the net off of it or not, is that you're taking the entire pace out of the serve. And this was used a lot back in the day by players such as Boris Becker, Michael Stich and John McEnroe. And it was amazing to see that they could hit the re bunt return with almost the same speed as the incoming serve. Now both of these returns require you to get a head start. In other words, you have to get up into the court before striking the ball. And by the one in particular, is an extreme version of that and that is the Sabre which stands for Sneak Attack by Roger and is often copied by Nick Kyrgios and this is a really insane return it's almost impossible to pull off and these guys do it even on a first serve they're basically running up to the return of serve and taking the ball literally right off the ground And guys, the chip and charge, the bunt and charge, and the saber are in the specialty shot category. And just like any other specialty shot, you have to keep these at a minimum so you don't lose the surprise factor. So if you're returning, maybe apply this particular return once a return game and you pick the situation where it can benefit you the most. And I don't recommend that you do the saber at all simply because it's almost impossible to pull off and you're going to lose a ton of points that way. When it comes to the bunt and charge, you can do it, but it's also a low percentage shot. However, the chip and charge is a high percentage play if you do it at the right time and the right time is on a second serve. How about the forehand side? Should you hit a 
forehand chip and charge or a forehand bunt and charge or even a forehand saber, I don't recommend that you do any of those on the forehand wing. And it's simply because it's a more complex movement on the forehand side to begin with, but also you don't use your forehand slice too much. So then that one time, again, when you decide to chip and charge and do it on the forehand side, because there's not a lot of confidence on that side, there's a higher chance that you're gonna miss it. So I encourage you to practice coming to the net off your back end return. This might be a nice addition to your game and might help you win more points at the net.